Hey orchestra students, welcome back. This is gonna be our second video lesson together for the school year. It's been so awesome to meet you all during our lunchtime sessions, and I'm really proud of how I'm seeing that you're coming to the lunch session prepared. I can tell that you've been watching the lesson video and you've been taking the time to do it on your own at home. I hope you remember that when you're watching the lesson videos, I would love for you to pause the video at any time rewind, rewatch something if you didn't get it on the first time. I think that that is really helpful for our learning. Repetition is our friend. It's very, very useful in our learning. So for our second lesson together, today we're gonna to be doing some very exciting things. In addition to reviewing our posture on our violin and cello and reviewing the names of our open strings and the ant song, we're gonna learn some new stuff too. We're going to learn the dad song, and I'm going to show you how to put your left hand fingers on the fingerboard for the very first time. Your tapes will be your guide. And at the end of class, we're going to learn how to play Hot Cross Buns, the famous song of all songs for string players to learn. So that's where we're headed in today's lesson. I wanna remind you that a lot of helpful material is on Google Classroom, including some pictures that show you uh, the fingerings for hot cross buns so that you can be practicing that on your own time at home. So please check the timestamps in the video description so that you can find your start time for your violin lesson or your cello lesson. See you there. Hi, violinists. You're in the right spot if you are here for your second violin lesson for the school year. So let's get started with our instruments out. And when I rest my instrument on my left leg like this, I'm in rest position. I have my fingers set up, my monster fingers set up. Notice I'm on my fingertips as I do this. And let's bring our instrument up into playing position. We swoop our instrument up onto our left shoulder because there's nowhere else for it to go. It only makes sense to go over onto your left shoulder. So let's do that again, rest position, down on the leg. Fingers are holding here, they're nice and rounded. And let's go into playing position in three, two, one. The instrument is out, it's resting up and back on my shoulder and my chin is nestled in the chin rest, okay? Look at my monster fingers. See how they're nice and rounded? They're on the fingertips. That's what I want you to do. This is gonna mimic the shape of your hand when we eventually bring it to the fingerboard later in class today. So monster fingers, playing position. Let's review how to do our ant song, which starts on our really high voice E and it goes down to our G. Get your pizzicato hand ready, right hand, thumb and pointer finger. Put the thumb on the side of the fingerboard like this. And we're starting on our skinny, skinny string, the E string. Let's get ready to play our ant song. Ready, set, here we go. Eek, eek, eek. Look at all the ants, ants, ants. Digging in the dirt, dirt, dirt. Going underground, ground, ground. Go to rest position. All right. That song should be super familiar for you, uh, hopefully by now, and hopefully you've memorized the order of your open strings. Starting high is E, going low, A, D, and G. G is your lowest. So let's learn a new song today using just our open strings. It's super simple. If you know how to play your D and your A string, then you can play the dad song. And in order to play the dad song, we just do it two times in a row because once is never enough. So here's how the dad song goes. I'm going up into playing position. Monster fingers, because I'm only using open strings. Get my pizzicato hand ready. Uh, center your thumb against the side of the fingerboard. Pointer finger releases. Find your D string. Think in your head. Eek, look at all the ants digging in the dirt. Okay, so you've found D. The dad song goes like this. D, A. D, D, A, D. Can you try that with me? D, A, D, D, A, D, because once is not enough. Ready, set, here we go. D, A, D. Again. 
D, A, D. Go to rest position, please. Instrument goes down onto the left leg like that. My monster fingers stay holding it. So I'd like you to add the dad song to your repertoire of what you are practicing at home. You've got your aunt song and your dad, dad song, and those only use open strings. And open strings means that we are not pressing our fingers down to make different notes. That's where we're headed right now. Before we add our left hand to the fingerboard, I want us to try a special string player magic trick. And this is called Look Ma No Hands. I would love for you to maybe do this with the help of an adult nearby, just in case uh, Look Ma No Hands ends up being not so successful for you on the first time, or maybe do it over your bed or a soft surface. The purpose of Look Ma No Hands is to show you that you're in control of your instrument and you do not need to grip the instrument ever with your left hand. You, The point of holding your violin is that it's supported by your chin and your shoulder. So I can take my hands off and say, look ma, no hands. So why don't you try that with me again, maybe with a soft surface underneath you, maybe make sure that your shoulder rest is really on snugly before you do this. But again, the point of this, one, it's kind of fun to show off, two, we never wanna grip the instrument with our left hand. We're just bringing the instrument to our body and our body is supporting the instrument. So let's try together, playing position. Make sure your instrument is up, up, up on the shoulder and back. Turn your head and put that chin in the chin rest. When you feel safe, you can try, dun dun dun, -dun look ma, no hands. Hold the instrument again, go to rest position, give your instrument a hug, thank you instrument. So once you feel comfortable with look ma, no hands, that should give you a big confidence boost to say, when I add my left hand fingers to the fingerboard, it's, that's not how I'm supporting my instrument up. This is just to make the sound. And I'm gonna give you some cues when you have your left hand on the instrument, like tap, tap, tap your thumb on the side of the neck to continue to show yourself that we're not gripping or holding tension in our left hand. All right. So let's learn, how do we put that left hand on the instrument for the very first time? We're going to take our left hand and make a V like this. The neck of the violin is gonna go here. This is gonna be your finger number one. So pianists, you're gonna be relearning your fingerings. This is not one. This is one, two, three, and eventually four. We're not learning four today. We're gonna to learn one, two, and three. Finger numbers one, two, and three. The neck of the violin goes here. Let's go into playing position with monster fingers first. Up, up, up on the shoulder. Turn my head and support it. You can do a quick look ma, no hands check. Dun, 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 dun. Make a V with your left hand. And I want you to find that first finger tape and make that V line up right there. Then I'm gonna have you scoot your whole hand down a little bit so that you your thumb is not jammed all the way up here. It's down and just the tip of your thumb is coming over the side, not the whole thumb. So slide the hand down. And you can also think of it as the this point right here is what's touching the side of the instrument. This point right here. So I'll show you that again. Monster fingers, make a V, slide back, scoot down. Let's put our first finger on the D string. So I'm gonna take my first tape, the one that's farthest back, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle my first finger, and let's put that down. I'm gonna compress the string all the way down to the fingerboard. So compress the string all the way down. Don't just lightly touch it, press all the way down. That's where my first finger goes. Second finger, third finger. Look how I'm on my fingertips, students. I'm not doing this. Up, up, up on the corner. You can think of being on like the inner edge of your fingernails. This is what I wanna see from my students. Now, once you have one, two, and three set up, would you please tap your thumb like this? Tap, 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 tap. Just to show you that you're never, you're not gripping onto the instrument. Remember, look, my no hands. 
So there's our three fingers set up. Let's go to rest position, take a little break. Give your instrument a hug. Thank you, instrument. So the next thing for us to learn today is hot cross buns. And we're actually, bonus, you learned how to put your third finger down today. That third finger is not in the song Hot Cross Buns. It's gonna be two, one, and then zero, open string. So the letter, the finger numbers, let's do the finger numbers first, are gonna be two, one, none, two, one, none, 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 one, 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 two, one, none. So I would love it if you could sing that at home as part of your practice. You can do the fingerings like this, two, one, none, just to remind yourself of how to play that. The letter names, the note names, if you would like to learn those today, are F sharp, E, D, for F sharp, the easiest way to sing it is using a syllable called feast. It just makes it easier to say because it's only in um, one syllable instead of multiples. So you'll hear me singing. Feast, E, D. Feast, E, D. D, 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 E, 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 E. Feast, E, D. Let's see what that would sound like on my violin. I'm gonna to go to playing position, start from monster fingers, up, up, up on the shoulder. I can do a quick look, ma, no hands check. Dun, 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 dun. Slide, make a V and slide my hand back. Scoot that thumb down. Curl your fingers over. And here's how we play hot cross buns. I'm gonna go pizzicato on my D string. Start with my two fingers pressing down. See how I'm on the inside edge of my fingernails? I want you to do that too. Curve the fingers. So let's play hot cross buns. Two, one, none. Ready, go. Two, one, none. See how I had to lift off all my fingers to just play my open D? Then we do it again. Put two fingers down. Two, one, none. Then I play my open D. None, 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 none. First finger goes down. One, 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 two, one, none. Go to rest position, take a break. Give your instrument a hug. Thank you, instrument. And let's do that at least two more times before we're done with our lesson for today. Remember that repetition is your friend. So. When you're first starting to put that left hand on the fingerboard, it's gonna feel probably extremely strange and uncomfortable, unless you have some prior experience with something like this before. So just know that it is so, so normal. If, you, if this feels really hard, or if it feels just plain weird on your body, you will get used to it. Just ride it out with me, okay? And take breaks, go to rest position, give your instrument a hug, and then lots of repetition. Lots of repetition of these skills up front right now is gonna make the whole year so much easier. So let's do hot cross buns again two more times. One thing I forgot to say earlier is that with your pointer finger especially, when you put it down on the fingerboard, please think make a box with your first finger. And by that I mean you want your first finger knuckle shape to look like a box. So I'm not doing that flat finger. Get it up, up, up. Please make a box with your first finger. You're gonna hear me continue to say that this year. Make a box with your first finger. Okay, let's get into uh, playing position for hot cross buns and we'll do it two times. And then your job is to practice, practice, practice on your own at home. Make a V, slide your hand back. This is first position. Scoot the thumb down so that it's not jammed up. Let's set down our two fingers carefully on the D string. Get our pizzicato hand ready. And here we go. Ready, set, hot, cross.
cross buns. Please. One more time. Notice how I'm keeping my fingers really close to the fingerboard the whole time. I'm not ever like, I'm not going. I'm hovering them or keeping them down. I want to see you trying that too. Keep those fingers like a magnet close or like a helicopter hovering right over the string. Two fingers down, ready, set, hot, cross, buns. Please. D, fingers stay close to the string. Please, B, D, 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 All right, go to rest position. Give your instrument a hug. Thank you, instrument. All right, we covered a lot in our second lesson of the year. This is really exciting. Um, remember, rewind, review. Go slowly, lots of repetition, and also don't forget to take a break when your body feels tired. All right, thank you violinists. I will see you next time. Hey cello players, you made it to the right spot if you are here for your second cello lesson of the school year. Welcome back. Today we're going to be reviewing how do we hold our cello with good posture, the names of our open strings, the ant song. We're gonna be learning a new song called the dad song. And then super exciting, we're gonna be adding our left hand fingers to the fingerboard to make some new notes and to play the song Hot Cross Buns. So lots up ahead. Don't forget that if something, if you didn't quite understand something or it felt like I was going too fast, just pause the video turn it back, rewind it, and rewatch something as many times as you need in order to feel good about it. So let's double check that our cello is up against our chest. Remember, we bring the instrument to our body. We're not slumping over. So bring the instrument to you, sit up nice and tall. Your end pin is at your two hands length, and it's sitting in the end pin strap. The corners of the cello are coming just above my knee, and my peg is meeting at my ear. Let's take our left, sorry, our right hand, add it to the fingerboard for pizzicato. Let's play our ant song. Again, my right hand, thumb anchors, pointer finger pulls, and I'm doing this just about an inch up the fingerboard. Remember, we're not doing it down here. My left hand is doing nothing for now. It can go behind my back. Sitting tall, anchor, start on your high string A, and let's sing our ant song together. Ready, set, here we go. Ants, 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 digging in the dirt, 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 going underground, ground, ground, all the way to China, China, China. Let's do that one more time. So we're starting on our high string, the, the thinnest string, which is on your far left side of your body, is our A. So please anchor that thumb, pointer finger releases. Ready, set, and sing and play. Ants, 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 digging in the dirt, 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 going underground, ground, ground, all the way to China, China, China. Hopefully that ant song is feeling really comfortable for you at this point, and I really hope that you have familiarized yourself with the names of those open strings. Let's learn a new song using our open strings. Again, open just means that we're not pressing fingers down on the fingerboard. We're just playing them as they are, and we call them open strings. Please find your D string. So think ants sticking in the dirt. Okay, there's my D string. The dad song is just spelling the word dad, D-A-D, and we do it twice in a row because once is just never enough. So we play D-A-D, then repeat D-A-D, and that's our dad song. 
Let's try it together. Right hand, anchor the thumb, pointer finger touches D. Ready and go. D, A, D. Do it again. D, A, D. Go to rest position. Give your instrument a hug. Thank you, instrument. For cellists, your rest position really just means you're sitting, waiting for instruction from your teacher. Um, for violinists, it means they have to move their instrument from their shoulder down to their leg. For you, it just means like put your hands quietly on your lap and continue sitting tall. Go to playing position. Bring your right hand up. That's your playing position. Go to rest position, please. Just waiting for instructions. Still sitting tall. Rest position doesn't mean that we slump over. It's nice to give our instrument a hug, but rest position still means uh, we're ready to go at any, any minute. Playing position. Let's play the dad song again. D-A-D, D-A-D. Ready, set, sing, and play. D position please. That's your dad's song. All right. Very exciting is now we get to learn how to put our left hand fingers onto the fingerboard. Your tapes, hopefully you have tapes on your cello, those tapes are going to be your guide. Um, so the first thing we want to learn is what's the shape of our left hand going to be when it comes to the fingerboard. I like to imagine put my left hand out in front of me like I'm holding a Coke can, a can of soda. Sometimes like when we're in school, I'll pick up my water bottle and I'll show students. This is how I would hold my water bottle or a can of soda. For today, I have a glass of water that we can see together. How do I hold a glass of water? Pretty natural that my thumb just kind of goes behind my middle finger as I'm holding it. If I asked you to pick up a water bottle or a can of soda, probably you would not hold it like this. It would be quite awkward and you might drop it. So it's the same thing when you bring your left hand to the cello. The thumb is gonna be right across from that, uh, your middle finger or your second finger. So just kind of shake your hand out. You want it to be pretty relaxed. We don't wanna be really tight and rigid. So floppy, floppy, floppy. Hold, gently hold your imaginary can of soda or maybe a glass of water or an empty glass. And then, and then you're gonna take that Coke can hand, don't change anything, just put the thumb on the back of the neck of the cello and line up your uh, pointer finger, your first finger on the tape that's farthest back, closer to your pegs. And then your third, finger goes on the next tape and your pinky goes on the last tape. So let me get a little closer and show you what that looks like. So my pointer finger is on the first finger tape. There's no tape for our second finger. We just get to skip that one. It still needs to land down, but we're skipping it. Third finger on the next available tape and then pinky on the last tape. So let's do that one more time. You're in playing position. Pointer finger alone, three fingers. Please put three fingers down and then four fingers. We just kind of skip our second finger. It's a note name that we're not ready to learn yet. So it's one, three, four. Let me back up and show you that in playing position. <clears throat> Shake out your hands, take some breaks. Coke can, nice soft rounded fingers. My thumb is across from my second finger. Don't change anything. Put that on the instrument. First finger, let's do this on the D string. So find your D string. First finger is gonna compress that string all the way down to the fingerboard. So don't just lightly place it. I want you to press that first finger all the way down so that the string touches the fingerboard. Three fingers next, and four. Shake out your hand. Let it rest, maybe swing it a little bit. Let's do that again. Coke can hand, soft rounded fingers, thumb across from middle finger. Bring it to the instrument, please. My thumb, my thumb rests on the back 
of the neck of the instrument just like that. Coke can hand, thumb on the back, first finger, press the string all the way down to the fingerboard, three fingers all the way down, and pinky all the way down. Take your hand off and release. I really want to reinforce that the shape of your hand is such that your fingers are rounded as they land on the fingerboard. They are rounded. So you could almost drive a, a train through the tunnel that your fingers make here. So please do not, please do not play with them flat like that. You want them up, 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 up. That's a big difference. When you can play on your fingertips like so, you're a lot more accurate with where you're placing your fingers. You're gonna play with better intonation, more in tune, and eventually you can play really, really fast stuff on your fingertips. So again, not this, not this, like that. And your thumb is just resting on the back. It's not sliding around. Remember, we're holding our can of soda and it just goes onto the instrument like so. So using the knowledge that we now have about the shape of our left hand, let's learn a song together. We're gonna learn a song using fingers three, one, and none. And the song is called Hot Cross Buns. So would you please sing with me? We're gonna sing the finger numbers for hot cross buns. It goes like this. Three, one, none. Do that again. Three, one, none. None, 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 none. One, 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 three, one, none. Let's listen to what that would sound like. On my D string, I'm gonna put down my three fingers, compress the string all the way down. If you only lightly touch your fingers to the string, it's only gonna make a sound if you compress your left hand fingers all the way down to the string. Float your elbow up a little bit, like there's a balloon tied to it. And let's see what this would sound like. Three, one, none, hot cross buns. Ready, set, Three fingers, here we go. Three, one, none. Do that again. Three, one, none. None, 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 none. One, 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 one. Three, one, none. Go to rest position. Take a little break for a second. The letter names for hot cross buns are gonna be F sharp, E, D. For F sharp, I'm actually gonna use a shorthand called fees. It just makes it easier to say because it's only one syllable instead of saying two syllables. So why don't I sing for you the letter names this time? Fees, E, D. Fees, E, D. D, 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 E, E. And again, we're skipping our second finger. This is a, the second finger plays a note that we're not ready to learn yet. So we go three is F sharp, one is E, and zero is D. And you don't get to choose which fingers to use. Like when I say one, I'm always talking about your pointer finger. So you don't get to choose like, oh, I'll just use my pinky as one. No, when I say one, I mean, one, your index finger, your pointer finger. When I say three, you don't get to choose which three to use. You have to use first, second, and third fingers together, these guys. Okay, let's do Coke can hand. Bring it gently to the instrument. Press three fingers all the way down, a nice strong left hand on your fingertips. Left elbow floats up slightly, and let's play with the letter names this time. Fees, E, D, ready, set, here we go. Fees, E, D. Do it again. Press three fingers down. Fees, 
D, D, then open D. D, 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 D. Pointer finger presses. E, 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 E. E, E, E. Go to rest position. Shake it out. Give your instrument a hug. All right, we learned a lot in our first our first lesson putting our left hand fingers down and our second overall lesson for the school year. I just want to remind you once again, please watch this video multiple times. Please practice the songs multiple times because repetition is your friend. Please feel free to pause the video whenever you need to and say, wait a minute, I didn't quite get that mistake and pause the video, watch it again until you understand. Um, I just also want to say that it's, it can be really weird and uncomfortable to put your fingers on the fingerboard for the first time. It might even feel like a little bit painful and I just want to let you know that that is very normal and you won't feel that way forever. So this is kind of the start of our learning curve and I just want you to ride this out with me and know that the more repetition that you do with this thing that might be a little uncomfortable, the easier it's going to get. Trust me, it's not gonna feel weird and uncomfortable forever. So don't be discouraged and just keep up your repetition at home. So great job cellists with your second lesson of the year. And I look forward to seeing you in our next live session.